Okay, hello everyone. I'm Marco and I'm going to talk about placodems. This is part of my PhD project at Imperial College with Martin Brazo. Okay, um, today vertebrates are represented by two different groups. One are the cyclostomes, the jawless fish. The other one is the gnatostomes, so chondrichthyan, sharks, and osteichthyan, bony fish, and tetrapod. These two groups are very different in, in morphology, so if we want to understand how these two groups um, evolve from their ancestor, and we have just the living record, it's very, very difficult because they are, like, there is a big morphological gap between these two groups. Fortunately, we have several fossil forms, especially from the Paleozoic, that can fill this morphological gap. And this has been recognized as to be um, an array of sister lineage towards crown gnatostome, and th there are jawless stem gnatostome, and Richard after me will talk about this, and there are jawed stem gnatostome, uh, usually called placoderms. My group of fish is this, the petalictis, is one of the placoderms uh, major group. Placoderm is, uh, are a big deal now because we still don't know well how they um, look like inside, for example, like internal anatomy, and which is the phylogenetic framework of placoderms. And it, this is a, a big debate. Um, placoderm seems to be very um, similar outside. Sometimes they say that these things, but inside they, they are pretty different each other. My group, for example, has been um, underlooked, even though they are very interesting because they have several features that resemble jawless fish but I need to take a step back a little bit. Um, okay, um, I'm studying the internal morphology, so neurocranial character of this, of this fish, um, because with internal morphology and especially brain case and uh, like brain and nerves and blood vessel morphology in fish, we can have additional information that can help us to reconstruct the character acquisition uh, in gnatostome evolution. Here you can see two major features that distinguish crown gnatostome to jawless fish. One is the morphology of the facial nerve, the pink one. Facial nerve have several branches, and one of these two branches, the hyomandibular and the palatine branches, uh, have a very different shape in jawless fish and crown gnatostome. In jawless fish, it's divided after the orbit, so the facial nerves go undivided inside the orbit and divided after. In Croniatostom instead, he divided before the orbit, so behind the orbit. And the jugular vein is a major blood vessel, is not invested in the brain case in Croniatostom and is instead invested in the neurocranium in Jolis fish. So we have this big difference in morphology of this and other characters. <coughs> Placoderms, that are in between because they are the only stem gnatostome with jaw, they have um, like a similar morphology in the arthrodiron group. Arthrodiron are the major group of placoderms, like Dancleosteus, big scary placoderms. Um, and they have a similar morphology in having a facial nerve that divides behind the orbit and a jugular vein. Um, in, not invested in the neurocranium, but other uh, placoderms like the petalictid have a kind of intermediate morphology. So this is macropetalictid, and here the facial nerves divide inside the orbital wall, and the jugular vein is invested in the neurocranium. So here we have a placoderm, so a jawed stem gnatostome that have some jawless feature. So it's kind of morphological intermediate between jawless and jawed stem gnatostome. Um, Nevertheless, petalictid have been like under sample in recent uh, phylogenetic analysis. Not um, the problem is that we know very few things about petalictis. Just one uh, one taxon has been studied in detail, macropetalictid by by Stencio almost 100 years ago, and the other one is Zonaspis, that is a complete <coughs> specimen, but we cannot see um, the internal character. So even though we know that petalictis are a very important group because they are, they are in intermediate between, in a morphological sense, between jawless and jawfish, we still don't know enough feature of them. That's why my project is um, about 
discovering more about these, these particular placoderms and I am looking at very well preserved specimen of petalictid and in Natural History Museum we have many of them and I started with this, this is Shiraz Biaspis from the early Devonian of Australia, it has been studied by Young before but not with CT scan or um, with other meat that can uh, provide an internal feature. So I uh, CT scan this specimen in NHM and I was actually looking at you know brain case and uh, brain morphology, uh, brain cavity morphology and then we discover this bone that is a parasphenoid and it was kind of unexpected in this in this fish because I've never been reported before and actually is a feature that has been observed in Joe Crown Yatostome and in the Arthrodire. So this was an unexpected feature and unfortunately I'm not going to talk about all the rest but just the parasphenoid because I don't have time. Um, the parasphenoid in Shiraz Biaspis appear to be in what I've been called the si simple morphology so it's kind of pentagonal in shape have a very big buccal hypophysial foramina and is covered by denticle. Um, and if we look the diversity of the parasphenoid in placoderm, we can see a, a major difference between Schusbiaspis paras parasphenoid and the other one of the arthrodire. Uh, I told you before that so far I have been described parasphenoid just in arthrodire among um, placoderms. And very interesting, the Morphology of the parasphenoid in Shesbiaspi resembles what one of crown yatostom like Onycodus and early um, an early Osteichthyan. And so how can we use this information now um, for understand what the, like this discovery can tell us about the primitive condition of the brain case and the skull morphology of uh, early vertebrate. If we plot information about parasphenoid on a on a tree, this is based on last Sam Giles paper, Janosiscus and Azu uh, matrix about the internal topology of the arthrodire. We can see that there are several features that can be used to um, kind of discover the assemblage of the parasphenoid in, uh, in placoderms and in stem gnatostom. For example, we don't have a parasphenoid in Osteostracan, we don't have a parasphenoid in Botryolipis and in an Antiarchids in general, they are other basal placoderms. Uh, we have a parasphenoid here, and the parasphenoid look um, at a, oh, the color are inverted, so, okay, this is, should be red and this should be green, sorry. So here is present, and there is an undivided book hypophysial foramina, like here, 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 and this uh, morphology can be seen in the very base of the tree and in the very end, like uh, in, in crow gnatostome. Instead, arthrodire have a completely different morphology because they have a divided book hypophysial foramina. Here, 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 you can see in almost all of them. There are some reversal, at, like in some clades. And they have a reduction or absence of denticle in some, in some clades. So uh, we can actually see there is a, a, a pattern in the character distribution of the parasphenoid. And this might be interested also for discovery synapomorphy of some of some group, for example, the eubrachytor acid, they are like advanced um, arthrodire, they show all an absence or reduction of denticles, so this could be a character that could be useful for systematic investigation. Um, in general, this discovery is quite unexpected because we, uh, I told you that petalictids are jawless, look like placoderm, and so we don't expect a, a very particular um, jaw feature like a parasphenoid that had been used before to link the osteichthyan with the arthrodire, for example. Um, how can we explain this uh, presence in this fish? We have four different scenarios depending on the uh, monophyly of the paraphyly of placoderm that is still debatable. And the most parasitic scenarios involve a conversion between these characters, so the parasphenoid is present in some placoderms and in osteichthyan because of convergence. If we have a monophyletic placoderm because we have uh, lost in anti here that increase the number of steps required. And if placoderm is paraphyletic, we have a um, acquisition of parasphenoid here 
uh, with the petalictid and are uh, lost in the chondrichthyon. So just two steps is equally parsimonious. So now the issue is, is the parasphenoid in placoderm endostachian homologous or is analogous? This has been debated before and some researchers like <coughs> Daniel Gouget or, or Gavin Young, they think that this parasphenoid in petalictid is actually a thickener part of the brain case. Um, in our CT scan, we can actually see there is a, a difference in, in the histology here. The, the bone is like more sponges, and here the brain case is a thin, very thin layer of perichondral bone. And in some uh, part of the CT scan, you can actually see a layer uh, on the top. So there is a layer of brain case and, and the parasphenid. So, and, and a lot of parasphenid have been found as like isolated remain. So there is, I think, enough reason to say, to claim that the parasphenol is homologous in uh, placoderms and in osteichthyon. So uh, a paraphyletic placodermy um, and a uh, origin of parasphenol here seems plausible with the evidence that we have found um, so far. And important, the lack of parasphenol in a chondrichthyon might be used full, um, might be used as a synapomorphy <coughs> of chondrichthyon and acantodians or the total chondrichthyon group. So my conclusions so far are that a simple parasphenoid is primitive for neatostome, or that at least for part of them, apart from the anti that we still don't know, was described, was actually, was mentioned in a paper and I asked to the author, he said, I'm not sure anymore, so who knows? And parasphenoid characters could be useful in systematic, especially inside the placoderm, and absent is in basal placoderms like anti arcade support a non monophyletic placoderm grade, and the absence of parasphenol could be a synapomorphy of chondrichthyon. Um, Petalictid can have, might have a lot of new uh, features as well that we haven't discovered before, but because they, they have been very poorly studied. So, my aim for the next months will be um, open up with CT scan other treasure box and see what I can see. Inside, so I have a new macropetalictic skull from Cleveland Museum and a skull from uh, allopetalictic skull that I found in NHM and has been described before, but this is kind of the only nice picture that we know so far. So we need to find out more. And the final goal of my project is expanding, expanding current database about stem neatostome and especially petalictic, so we can refine competing hypotheses about Placard and phylogeny and resolve the, hopefully, the debate. I want to thank the Sealwood Paleo Lab, Martin Brazo, my supervisor, Richard, we talk later, Imperial College, Natural History Museum, European Research Council, and thank you for the attention. Any questions?